Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 4th, and right now we're looking at the Camano Island Doppler radar. You can see Seattle underneath that. Look at that big swath of precipitation that came across early this morning. Again, a nice shot of rainfall for the region. Then you can see it move across the Seattle metro and then back up into the foothills and the mountainous areas there that you guys might enjoy sit, taking a look at that. When we take a look at the mid-level water vapor loop, you can see the low pressure center off our coastline here in that precipitation to get moving across as we go through this morning. So we're going to remain unsettled here for a couple days, and then we've got a bit of a pattern change. We swing some of these systems out of the north and west, bring some colder air aloft, and we're going to build up some mountain snows before we have then a, yet another pattern change after that, which we'll take a look at as well. And if you want to watch all this crazy weather, come in here and get one of these Tempest weather stations, save 10% off by clicking on the link down below. You help support the channel as well. Uh, check out the Facebook page also. So it's Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. I'll leave the link down below, but this is it just makes it easier for a lot of my users to share it with friends and family. So uh, getting that going out there. Uh, we're, uh, working with Washington Weather Chasers also to kind of get the word out there. Ben Yurkovich over there doing a good job. And taking a look here at Seattle Tacoma National Weather Service. Again, the coastal flood advisories, coastal flood warnings are out there for some of the very high tides. It's a good thing we didn't get these overly excessive strong winds because the water levels are very high. It could still be causing some flooding issues. There's even that coastal flood warning for places like Bellingham and some of the San Juans this morning. Something similar for the Oregon coast here also. And you can see they talk about that uh, as we go through the next weekend, uh, Spokane talking about the, the cool down occurring and i'll show you more on that here in a moment updated snowfall uh, this was last night this goes through monday night check out crater like another foot foot and a half there so be careful when you're out and about across some of the higher terrain the siskiyou's maybe getting a little bit of snowfall here as well much higher across the surrounding terrain however and if we take a look at today, you're going to see they did put a thunderstorm risk across southwest Washington portions of northwest Oregon with some of these showers moving in. And if we take a look at that, this is the experimental product, the RRFS. This is going to take over for the high resolution rapid refresh and the North American model. And you can see these showers moving in as we go through the day, day to day. Maybe it's moderate and occasional heavy rainfall as some of these move through. Some mountain snows kind of hit and miss across some of the mountainous areas. But as I'm scrolling through here, you notice kind of the more persistent band of snowfall there across of the southern Oregon Cascades as we go on in through Monday morning. Then we get a bit of a break. And then we start to bring the next frontal system, as I mentioned, out of the north and west. And you can see some of the mountain snow coming in with that. Check out this frontal system as we go through the day on Tuesday, pushing across the coastal areas, moving across some of the interior region there. We get a little break from that system. And then yet another system is on its way out of the north and west. This one a little bit chillier as we go through Wednesday night. Another frontal system sliding through with that and some more mountain snow. And again, high tide out there very early this morning for the Puget Sound will be dropping off a bit but staying high during the day today then a very low tide in the overnight hours and another very high tide probably the highest of the bunch here as we go through tomorrow morning so hopefully again not much wind will be out there Cape Disappointment uh, closer to noon here today uh, we'll be dealing with the high tide then a very low tide again as we go through this evening then bouncing back again some high tide activity there as well so if we look at the wave action you can see the Pacific Northwest is to the right of this image there's the Gulf of Alaska. You can see Kodiak Island, for example. If I put this into motion, you notice we have some wave action out here. It's a little bit elevated, but it's nothing too crazy for the Pacific Northwest. And as you scroll on into the next couple of days, you'll notice this system coming across the Gulf of Alaska. It's got some strong winds, long fetch, so it's getting some pretty big wave action rolling into the West Coast of North America here. And this goes as, well, let's see, when that starts to arrive, you know, the yellows are 10 plus foot waves. And then we start to get on in towards Wednesday morning. They really start to build. We go through Thursday morning, some pretty big waves out there on the coastal areas. More of a west-northwesterly direction with that. Now, taking a look at the European model. So, again, precipitation ongoing here. There's the first system. Then we flip the switch there. We go out of the northwest. European showing something similar to what I showed you with the RRFS. And then we go on in through Thursday. And then we start to finally build some ridging here as we go through next week and kind of see it starting to develop. Storm track yet again pointed up towards southeast Alaska and mainly western British Columbia. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But if we take a look at the Gulf of Alaska, and we're now looking in the upper levels of the atmosphere, 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet. You can see the chillier air aloft moving in 
as we go through tonight to tomorrow morning and again that pattern change look at this slug of cold air as we go through the day on wednesday the coldest air aloft arriving as we go through probably wednesday afternoon evening and wednesday night we'll take a look at some of the impact from that and then you see the ridge starting to build here out uh, across our area as we go towards the end of the run so taking a look at the wider view of the Pacific Ocean, you got the you got Japan all the way to the the left side of this image. There's the Pacific Northwest to the right. Hawaiian Islands are right there. This is at about 500 millibars as well, or 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. Now watch this at 18,000 feet. Look at this jet stream racing across the Gulf of Alaska there. I mean, you hesitate to call it a jet stream truly because it's only at 18,000 feet. Jets aren't traveling at that altitude across the Pacific Ocean. But you can see as we go through the day Wednesday, look at that supercharged wind there as we go on in through the day Wednesday, Wednesday night. That ushers in that very cold air mass. Now, on the flip side of that, if I show you 200 millibars, this is 39,000 feet, a lot more planes up here. This is more properly a jet stream, but you can see the trough we're dealing with now. <clears throat> what I want you to pay attention to is this very potent jet stream coming off the coast of, you know, the Western Pacific Ocean coming off the coast of Asia out there. So this, we drive across this front trough as we go through this Wednesday. There's that cold air aloft arriving, but this jet stream is extending out across the Western Pacific, and that's what's going to trigger the ridging downstream as we go to the very end of the run you can see that ridging here so we may get a break and dry out a bit as we go towards the mid portion of january more on that here in a moment it depends on how things set up exactly of course and again 500 millibars a little bit of a closer look there's wednesday night system right there and 700 millibars, 10,000 feet, also showing you. We have do have a three-dimensional atmosphere. And as we go through the day once, so you can see that slug of cold air arrive right there. And then the ridging behind it. So if we take a look at some of the lower level winds, I was kind of checking out to see if we were getting to get some significant <clears throat> convergent zone activity. And as we, I want to check out that system as we go through Wednesday night. So you can see it as we go through the day Wednesday we do bring some of this convergent zone activity late Tuesday night into Wednesday. Then we go through Wednesday night and again, you can kind of see it stretch here across the region. That's when the coldest air aloft is going to arrive. We do have the potential for some lower elevation snowfall where the best convergence sets up with that cold air aloft across the region. So we will be watching that as we go through the upcoming days. Again, Wednesday night, probably the best. And it's showing some of that across Skagit, maybe Northern Snohomish County. We'll continue to watch that over the next few days. So, because if we look at accumulated positive snow depth change, and inches and scroll through here you'll see that as we go through wednesday night notice this going on up here again across uh, skagit county you could get some convergence on activity and again we'll be watching the higher hills with the arrival of this cold air and whatnot some convergence on activity here mainly north of seattle uh, more on that here in the next few days but if we look at the artificial intelligence there's the troughing we're dealing with now there's our shot of cold air again as we go through wednesday night then we start to build that ridge here across the west coast of north america it gets really extended all the way up into north Northwest Alaska. Now on the flip side of this, this ridge wants to keep developing and then it eventually starts to retrograde a little bit to the west. You see how it did that? There's the Gulf of Alaska here. Again, the ridging pushes off a bit far enough to the west. And you may at the end of that get some of this coming down on the backside for some cooler air trying to get down into the Pacific Northwest. Of course, there's no guarantee on, guarantees on how that's going to unfold. I'm just kind of exploring possibilities on how we could get some Arctic air or some cooler weather down into the Pacific Northwest. And right now that's probably our best shot as we go towards January 17th, 18th, 19th, maybe the ridge retrograding and allowing for some cooler air to move in. Now, looking at the European 15-day precipitation anomaly, of course, the storm track pointed northward is going to leave us with a lack of precipitation here as we go through the next 15 days. So again, we'll see how that turns out. Now, on that note about the extended ridge and just exactly what it's going to do, I want to show you last night's European model. So there goes that slug of cold air we talked about Wednesday night. Ridge starts to build in the wake, and then you can kind of see that hangs with us. But then you see it kind of extend up towards Alaska, and it allows for that north flow to come down across western canada and back into the pacific northwest so this would be a very cold pattern for a lot of the you know, western usa and the intermountain west perhaps the pacific northwest as well so just one of the possibilities going on through the extended forecast you should not be taking this as gospel or anything like that it's just something fun to look at and trying to explore some of the possibilities of some of this cooler weather getting down into the region we need this ridge to be far enough away where it allows for that north flow to come back down into the pacific northwest and if you like lower elevation snowfall you want it to be far enough away so you can get it just off the bc coast pick up some of that pacific ocean moisture and deal with that cold air and then really hammer the pacific northwest and get us some lower elevation snow uh, drought monitor we looked at this 
the last day or so as well. And you can see Western Washington is drought free. Much of Oregon is drought free, except for Northeast Oregon. And again, still some moderate and some severe drought out there. But again, much improved here over the last, last few months. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. You still see the above average signal hanging on through January 17th. Hopefully we cool down after that. But then again, this Climate Prediction Center is paying attention to that ridging for the West Coast of North America. They are definitely got that below normal signal for us. Check out the Patreon page if you like. Um, what else? Uh, take it easy out there and I will catch you guys in tomorrow's forecast.